Hey, here today with Jonathan. We're trying to talk about course management. You want to tell us a bit about, obviously, what you do as well? Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, I'm helping my brother in his little quest to get to scratch. Um, obviously, he's shown me the scores and he's shown me what he's done on each hole and, and talked through it as best as he can. Uh, but I'm out here today because he's obviously making some maybe mistakes that maybe don't, he shouldn't be. Um, so we're just going to have a little look at his course management, how he's seeing certain holes, why he's hurting certain clubs, just so he understands it. Um, and then we're going to go through it and then analyse it after. But on the way around, if he can understand why he's hitting certain shots and why certain holes, the way the, the setup are trying to force you to do things. Um, and then obviously for him to progress and get to his next step at the minute, he's going to be off about 16, I think his first handicap is going to be. So he's not got to be doing anything special, he's not got to be chasing things. Um, so we've just got to look at his, the way he plays the course and obviously there's going to be bad shots in there, we all do that. But if we can just make things as simple as they can they can be, he's going to be a lot more committed and hit simpler shots and ultimately score better. So that's what we're going to try and do today. Okay, perfect. Right, let's get on with it. First. Right, so we're just on the fifth hole. Um, Jonathan's just talking me through the tee shot now, so I'll let you go. Yeah, uh, we're on the fifth. Um, obviously, I've never been here before. I'm asking my brother how he usually plays it. Um, and he'll put a picture of the hole up later on. And his first thing, instinct's a to hit a driver. Now, his bad shot with the driver is quite a slice. So, if you see on the, if it shows on the course map, the tree's cutting on the right hand side. So we've hit three wood because he's not gaining much uh, biting driver. It's only a short hole. It's probably only going to leave him a nine iron in off a of three wood. Um, but obviously it's going to allow him to commit a little bit more if he's hitting three wood. Uh, not because it's an easier club to hit, just simply because if he leaks it right, it's not going to reach the trees. Whereas driver is going to reach the trees. So he's got a lot bigger target to aim at. So that bad shot, his slice, is still going to be in a good position. Uh, whereas with driver, obviously, he's going to be in a bit of trouble. So a small thing, uh, not in three wood because it's easy to hit, just hitting it because it's the right club for this hole. Um, and then obviously it's leaving a 9-9 nine -nine as opposed to a wedge. Well, you know, there's not a big enough difference to make that tee shot as hard as it, it might be with a driver. Let's go. So, just so you can see, absolutely nailed it. Way. Hi right, guys, uh, right, we're just on the seventh hole now. So I'm just getting uh, Matthew to start talking through shots. So where he wants to start it, where he's to finish it. Um, a lot of people, I think, you know, they, they look at where they want to finish it, but if you hit a slice, if you hit a draw, if you, you know, you can hit a number of shots but not many people think about where they're starting it and what gives them the margin. So we've done it a few times now where I've talked him through what he needs to do. This hole I've not mentioned anything um, and I want to let him talk through where he wants to start it, finish it and so on. Right, okay, so I'm looking to basically start it on this left big tree, let it come down in basically the middle of the fairway. Uh, I've got three wood. I would normally take a driver, but we've talked about it. Um, and basically by hitting three wood I'm eliminating a lot of that trouble especially on right and left because I'm not really going to get there whereas three wood again like the other hole uh, it's going to get me far enough down not going to be much less of a club um, so yeah start on the on the left tree let it come down into the fairway right guys so one of the things a lot of the, everything he said there is really good but I don't know if you noticed he was really accurate with his start line but then he said the middle of the fairway. Now the middle of that fairway, that fairway is now 30 yards wide. So if you can get a lot more accurate where, you know, the, the, all I picked up from that, everything he described was, was correct. But I'd be saying, right, start it on that big tree. And I don't know if you can see it on this video, there's a green side bunker, which is the right edge of its middle of the fairway. So that, that's what you'd be trying to aim at. Um, you you want to get a lot smaller with your targets. All of a sudden you'll start seeing a better picture in your head. It's such a small thing, but you know, you've got to give yourself a plan before before anything. Um, so that's that's my advice there. Let's see how he does. Oh. 
<sighs> Creamed it. He seems to think that's good, but that's just right at the bunker. It's in the fairway. <laughs> <laughs> Come on then, let's watch the master, see if he can follow that. You can put that camera down and put six down at home for me if you want. <laughs> Good talk. Oh, I gave him line to be fair. Good put. Okay, so we've just played the ninth. Uh, Jonathan's going to talk us through it, and yeah, I'll just show you. All right, guys. Uh, right, yeah, we played the ninth, which is a par five. Again, I think it's just understanding what holes fit Matthew's eye. So. On certain holes where there's trouble that's going away from him on the right hand side, he can hit driver because it's not cutting in and if he hits that right shot, it's fine. So we hit three wood up there and I appreciate it's hard to kind of un understand when we're talking like this, but if he puts a picture of the hole on, you can understand now the trouble cuts in on the right. He's not in a position where he needs to be taking par fives on in two unless it's, you know, there's quite a bit of room up there at the minute. So it was just going to be a three wood layup. Now he hit it great, hit it straight, and it just trickled into a hazard on the left. It didn't fade, but it was a great shot, it was straight. So we dropped out, played percentages again, made six, not the end of the world, but we, we, we never tried to take it on. We never tried to, just because we've gone in a hazard off the tee, we've not tried to chase it and try and get it up on the green, make more troubles. And that, you know, at, at the standard, uh, Matthew's out of the minute, 16 handicap, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> you don't really need to be taking par fives on. You just need to get it in areas and then, you know, making a par or a six and, and, and realising that's fine. But if you're in the middle of the fairway and you can go for it in two and, and you know, it fits your eye the shot, take it on by all means and, and take that opportunity. But, you know, if you are in trouble, just get yourself out of it and just play as if you were in the middle of the fairway again. So I think just to put in there what I would have looked at that shot from dropping out the hazard, and I would have thought, right, let's try and get it back now. So I'd try and put it on the green, you know, like thinking, oh, I'll go for it. Potentially then not leave myself in a good position because I know, obviously, nine times out of ten, I'm not going to really hit, well, maybe five out of ten, I don't know. I'm not going to hit that perfect shot onto the green to get it back. So doing what we did, even though I actually ended up in a bunker, but again, in another position, not trying to just chase the hole. So, yeah, I'm in Jonathan there to to tell me to almost like put Ramey back a little bit and then just, yeah, making making it simple, really just breaking it down. And I looked at it, like I said, made a six on the hole, so only a bogey. I looked at that, like that should have really been an eight for me. Like realistically how I've been playing, that hole would have turned into an eight quite easily, I think. Yeah, and I think you guys, you know, if you're watching this and I think you've got to understand that everyone's got a different game so Matthew shot is a bit of a slice at the minute now he's working on his swing with his coach and everything like that and things have got very technical early and they should because he's trying to improve but today we've been more about routines and understanding how to play the hole and uh, you know as his game progresses his shot shape might change and then you start playing holes that fit that so it's playing to a game plan that fits you guys not one not what someone else does not what someone else thinks you should do it's what fits your game and you've got to be at times the hardest thing is being honest with yourselves on what on what you should be doing um but so far it's been good but this back nine i'm i'm going to let him do his own thing and hopefully is um is is learnt enough in that front nine to then go and set about right let's play this back nine and, and talk through my shots just by himself and, and see if he can get himself around this golf course. So let's see how he does. So 
So if you look guys like if Matt's teed it up in the middle of the tee box here and he hits a bit of a fade. Now you can see these trees on the left. Now if he just tees that up on the right side of the box, all of a sudden he's got a lot of room to it into that left side at the minute. Visually those trees on the left are just going to push him right whether he thinks it or not. So this is just a simple thing about where you even tee the ball up. You know, if you're a drawer of the ball, that's not a problem. But if he just tees this up on the right-hand side, he can hit into that left-hand side and he's got a bit of room to do so.